Hello and welcome to my presentation on machine learning for dynamic resource allocation in network function virtualization. So in NFV, we have these chained VNFs that together provide some kind of service, for example, for video streaming. In this case here, combined of a cache VNF and a proxy or a web server. And now in order to provide the service to our users, we need to start instances of these VNFs and run them on compute nodes across the network where each node has some kind of limited compute capacity. And uh, for example, here we have a user that's connected to our running VNFs. And if more users arrive over time, we can just uh, assign them to our running instances. Or if they arrive at a new location, we might also want to scale out and start a new instance uh, that's closer to these new, uh, new users. And the overall goal here is uh, first of all, to satisfy user demand. So to make sure that all users are assigned to their requested VNFs and that these VNFs have enough resources allocated to process the user demands. But at the same time, we also do not want to waste resources because that basically means wasting money, wasting energy, and we don't want that. And so this trade-off uh, depends on multiple influencing factors, which can change quite frequently over time and which makes this VNF scaling and placement problem quite complex. That's also why uh, typically this, or often this problem is solved automatically with VNF, VNF placement algorithms. Okay, so far I've only talked about horizontal scaling, so about starting a new instance of a VNF. But what about vertical scaling? So what about uh, the question of how much resources do I allocate to such a new instance or to an individual instance? So far, the most common approach here is still fixed resource allocation. So that means that I allocate the same amount of fixed resources for all instances of a specific VNF. So for example, here in this case, I just allocate 80% CPU to all of my uh, VNF instances. And in this example here, uh, where I just have one or two users, uh, this works fine. I mean, that's mo more than enough resources to process all the user demands, and my users are happy. But then again, um, I, prob I probably don't even need all of these 80% CPU. And so a lot of these res resources might still be unutilized and are basically wasted. And I also have another problem. So if more users are deriving, it might, and I assign them to the same VNF here, it might still work fine for two users. And maybe for three users, it still works. But um, these allocated 80% CPU become uh, fully utilized at some point. And then if I keep uh, adding more and more users to this VNF, at some point it has no longer enough resources to properly process all of these requests. And at that point, the service quality goes down, service quality decreases, or the service even completely breaks for these users. And then my users are unhappy and that's really bad, right? So with fixed resource allocation, over or under allocation is prone to, or at least very easy to happen. So we easily either allocate too much or too little resources. And that means we either waste resources, we waste money, or we have unhappy users because we can't satisfy their demand. And that's both really bad. And so a much smarter thing to do is dynamic resource allocation. In dynamic resource allocation, rather than assigning the same fixed amount for all instances, we dynamically adjust and individually adjust the allocated resources per instance according to the current demand that it's processing. So in case that we just have one user or one user group here, maybe 30% CPU is sufficient to process that demand. And if another user arrives, we just allocate more resources and more and more. And so even when more and more users join, um, we just allocate more resources and we can still satisfy their demand such that all four of our users are now happy. So that's great, right? So with dynamic resource allocation, we adjust the resources uh, to the demand. So with increasing demand, which is increased to allocated resources, uh, and that means we can satisfy user demand, we can have happy users, and at the same time, we only allocate resources that we really need so that we do not have wasted resources. And uh, one more thing that I want to highlight is that over allocation, so allocating too much resources not just means that we're wasting resources money, it might also affect VNF placement and quality of service. For example, here, uh, again, we have one user that's using a service consisting of two VNFs, and these two VNFs uh, each would only need 
in reality, 30% CPU, CPU to process.users demand. And so we could easily fit them both on this node close to this user. Now, if we instead uh, do the same over fixed resource allocation, the same over allocation where we set just assign 80% for each of these two um, BNFs, then we can no longer fit them both on the same node because it that does not have enough resources, but instead we need to distribute them. We need to place the se that second BNF farther away such that we have here an additional path delay such that we have overall a higher end-to-end -end delay and worse quality of service and again, unhappier users. And this means even with more resources allocated, we might still get worse service quality. Okay, so I hope you're now convinced that precise and dynamic resource allocation is important. Well, there's one big question that uh, remains open that I didn't address yet. And that's how much resources do I need to allocate exactly if I want to do this dynamic resource allocation? And that's kind of the or one of the core questions of this paper that we have or that I'm presenting. Now, the basic intuition is that if I have more traffic to process, then I should allocate more resources. And that certainly makes sense, but it's not very precise. So I need to know more precisely how much more resources do I need to allocate and unfortunately, there is no simple general answer, answer for that because it depends on the specific VNF that we're talking about here. And this relationship between uh, traffic to process and uh, required resources not only depends on the specific VNF, but it's also often nonlinear. So we might have a situation like this one here where we have um, traffic loads or user demand on the horizontal axis and then uh, resource requirements in order to process that load on a vertical axis and the resource requirements go up super linearly. Um, yeah, now if we again just do the fixed resource allocation, it might look like this. We have a fixed amount of resources allocated independent of how much load we have to process. And as we discussed earlier, this le leads to drastic over allocation or under allocation, which is both really bad. And so an idea for dynamic resource allocation would be a linear approximation of our true resource requirements. So this blue line here, and you can see this is a much better fit. It's much closer to what we really need, uh, but you can also see it's not quite perfect yet. We still have these areas here uh, with under allocation or with over allocation here. And of course the question is now, can we do better than this uh, linear approximation? Uh, and the answer is yes, we can. And this is now where the machine learning comes into play. So in our paper, we propose a machine learning based approach with four different steps. And I'm going to walk you through this approach now step by step. Okay, so, um, so far in this previous uh, slide with the plot, I pretended like we know the true resource requirement it was that black line, right? And that's of course not true. In practice, we don't know what the true resource requirements are. Uh, nobody tells us, so we have to find out first. And that's, what, uh, that's why in the first step, we do VNF benchmarking. And that means as an input, we can take any kind of black box VNF that we have in our service and that, that we want to know the resource requirements for. And then for this VNF, or then we configure this VNF with varying resource requirements, sorry, with varying resource configurations and then stress uh, that would be enough with maximal traffic and measure to obtain throughput that we can get. Repeat this multiple times, also with multiple different resource configurations. And then in the end, we have a large collected data set of uh, measurements between, uh, of measurements uh, of throughput and the corresponding resource configurations. Yeah, and so this first step here, the benchmarking is based on previous work that we published last year. Now, once we have this VNF benchmarking data, this raw data, then in the second step, uh, we train machine learning models on this data. And the goal here is that uh, these machine learning models learn the relationship between the traffic that the uh, VNF was able to handle and the corresponding resource requirements it needed for that. And then after training, uh, what we want to do or what we can do with these machine learning models is that we give it as an input the traffic load for this given VNF that we, uh, that we benchmarked and trained on. 
So some kind of new traffic load that the Sabine F might have to handle. And as an output, the machine learning model tells us uh, that the machine learning model generalizes the data that it was trained on and it tells us and predicts what the resource requirements are in order to process that load. And if we have more than one VNF in our service, we can just repeat this step one and step two for each of our VNFs. Yeah, um, in the paper, we have more details about how to do this uh, machine learning, how to pre-process pre and scale the benchmarking data, how to choose a suitable machine learning model, how to tune hyperparameters. Um, not going to do into detail now, but we're going to see later during the evaluation which models work well and which ones don't. So uh, in step three and four, we now finally have our machine learning models and we use them for VNF placement. So uh, in step three, we integrate these machine learning models into an existing VNF placement algorithm. So we do not need to reinvent the wheel here, but instead there are already lots of VNF placement algorithms out there. They're great and uh, basically, you can use whichever algorithm you prefer, and you can integrate these models into that algorithm. It should be relatively low overhead, because all that you have to do is you have to replace uh, the part where the algorithm assigns fixed resources or calculates the resources uh, for VNFs in some way with a call to your machine learning model. And because all or most machine learning models uh, use this sklearn API, and it's very consistent for all these models. You can transpar transparently switch and swap machine learning models for different VNFs without ever having to touch the code again. So a bit oversimplified, what you have to do is basically remove the line in your code that says, OK, always allocate 80% CPU, and instead call your machine learning model and ask it to predict uh, the required resources for the given rate, so for the rate that the VNF has to process, and then finally allocate uh, these resources for the VNF. Um, yeah, and then finally, once you integrated the machine learning models, you can really use your uh, extended or enhanced machine, or sorry, your enhanced VNF placement algorithm in step four, and um, use it to predict resource requirements for a given data rate. So inside your VNF place an algorithm, the algorithm might want to uh, start a new instance and can just now ask the machine learning model, hey, this instance will need to uh, process this load, this traffic, how much resources do, you know, do I need to allocate? And the machine learning model makes the prediction and allows accurate, yeah, accurate resource allocation here. So, um, that's our approach for precise and dynamic uh, resource allocation. And one more thing that I want to highlight is that steps one, two, three uh, can all be performed offline. So they take some time, but you only have to perform them once upfront offline. And then only step four is what you do online when you want to compute a VNF placement. And this step goes really fast. Yeah, and one more thing is that this whole approach is pretty generic and modular, which means that it's not just limited to a certain VNF, but in the contrast, you can use, uh, in the contrary, you can use whatever black box VNF that you might have that you want to use in your service. And uh, you're also not limited to a specific machine learning algorithm or model, but you can use basically any regression model um, as a machine learning model. Again, we're going to see which ones work well and which ones don't later on. Yeah, and then as I also mentioned, um, this is agnostic from the specific uh, VNF placement algorithm you might want to use. Uh, it should be relatively low overhead to integrate into al any algorithm. Uh, we did it with, or we integrated these machine learning models into one of our VNF placement algorithms and uh, the changes were less than 100 lines of code. So it's really quite simple. Okay, so let's come to the evaluation. So uh, for the evaluation, we chose two real-world VNFs, the Squid Cache and the Nginx Proxy, for which we have benchmarking data available that tells us, uh, or that contains the different resource configurations during uh, benchmarking and the achieved th throughput with these configurations. And as the first question that we wanted to answer in our evaluation is, how well can the or can different machine learning models learn from this VNF data? And then once we evaluate that, um, what's the impact from the predictions from the different machine learning models, depending on how accurate they are, 
on the final VNF placement that we can get. So remember at the beginning, I had this example saying that the way we do resource allocation um, also can affect our VNF placement. And so that's um, what we investigate in the second step. Yeah, and uh, in order to do that, we considered six different machine learning models and the fixed resource allocation model, uh, two linear models, support vector regression, two ensemble models, and a neural network. And we trained these models with uh, five-fold cross-validation to uh, measure their accuracy on unseen data. Yeah, and these are the results uh, uh, on the engine X um, data. So um, what you can see here are on the horizontal axis, the different machine learning models and the fixed model here. And on the vertical axis, the root mean square error. So the prediction error um, on the unseen data. So this means a lower value is better. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that this fixed resource allocation leads to a much higher error than all other models. This is exactly what we've been talking about the whole time, so it's not surprising. Um, the, all the other models perform much better, and the best ones here are, in this case, uh, the gradient boosting, uh, this ensemble model here. Um, what we can also see is that um, hyperparameter tuning, so you can see here the default, uh, the performance with the default hyperparameters in darker and with the tuned hyperparameters in lighter gray, is that this hyperparameter tuning is mostly useful for the more complex models. So here for the support vector regression, the uh, neural network, this multi-layer perceptron, the gradient boosting, but not so much for uh, the linear models. And um, here we have a visualization of some of these tuned machine learning models to give you some kind of intuition of what the results look like. So in black, we have the uh, true resource requirements. So this is the data from the benchmarking. And um, yeah, first of all, the green line is the fixed resource allocation, fixed to 80% as before, horrible, mostly drastic over allocation here. Um, you can also see the linear model here. So it's this blue line, it's much better already, but you can also see that uh, some of the other machine learning models here, the support vector regression, the gradient boosting, are again much closer to the true resource requirements. And the reason for that is that they support non-linearity that we have in these true research requirements here. Yeah, and so let's come to the second part of the evaluation. So uh, on the impact of VNF placement. So we now have the trained machine learning models uh, trained on the Engine X data, trained on the SQUID data. And um, we want to use these machine learning models in our VNF placement algorithm and then investigate um, how the resulting VNF placements are different for the different um, machine learning models. And for that, we pick the best models um, for the two VNFs, so with the lowest error, the linear model, and the fixed resource allocation. And these are the results. So um, here are the um, total allocated uh, resources, total allocated CPU over all VNF instances for varying traffic load. And the first thing that you can see is that, um, again, the fixed resource allocation leads to much, much, much higher total allocated CPU, at least three times higher than the other two models. Um, just because this over allocation, of course, adds up. If you have more instances, it gets bigger and bigger. And then in the end, you end up wasting a lot of resources here. Um, here, it seems like the linear model and the uh, best model, so the linear model is the blue line, the best model is the red line, it's the SVR for, um, for the squid VNF and boosting for the engine X VNF uh, are very similar and that's true, but you can if you zoom in, so this is the same, same data just zoomed in, um, see that there are still uh, considerable or noticeable differences between the two. Uh, which indicate that there is still some over or under allocation in this case, most likely for the linear model because it has the higher error. Yeah, and these are just the results now for the total C allocated CPU, but we have similar results for 
um, the total number of instances that were placed and for the total delay. And for all of these, the fixed model was clearly, clearly worse than the other models. And uh, our SVR and boosting model was always a bit better than the linear model. Now, I've talked so much about benefits for these machine learning models that, of course, I guess you're asking in your head, what are the drawbacks? Is there any over additional overhead that I have uh, when using this machine learning in my VNF placement algorithms? Um, what about increased runtime when I, when I want to use these models? And uh, of course, uh, if you do fixed resource allocation, you just always allocate 80%. You don't have any prediction time, it's zero. And in contrast to that, the predictions do take time with some time with the machine learning models, but it's more the training that happens offline up front that's time consuming and the predictions here for all the models are below one millisecond. And that's really fast. Um, what's also very noticeable here is that even below these or with these uh, predictions here, the random forest model is much higher, has a much higher prediction time than the other models. This is because um, it uses fairly deep decision trees that need to be traversed for every prediction, which makes it a bit slower than the other models. This gradient boosting uses flatter trees and the neural network only has one hidden layer in our configuration, so they're uh, much faster here. Uh, but either way, they're all pretty fast. Um, but this is just the time for one prediction average over multiple repetitions. So what about the, uh, complete placement time. So to run the complete VNF placement algorithm to com to get a complete placement. And here we see that, uh, of course, the random forest uh, is slowest. It adds up to almost 100 seconds placement time. But suddenly, the fixed model is much worse than before. That's a bit surprising. But we looked at it. And the reason is that uh, due to the severe over allocation with the fixed model, more instances, much more instances are placed there. And for every instance, the VNF placement algorithm has to decide where to place it, how to connect it. So it's a lot more overhead on the inside the VNF placement algorithm that leads to even similar or maybe even higher placement times here for the fixed model than for the other machine learning models. And so overall, <laughs> I can say that the machine learning models when compared to fixed resource allocation are not just much better, they're also at least as fast as the fixed resource allocation. And um, yeah, so uh, that brings me to my conclusion. Um, we saw that we can train machine learning models from real world VNF data. Uh, we saw that these fast and accurate predictions by these machine learning models can help for precise and dynamic resource allocation. And in the end, that helps us to ensure happy users because uh, we make sure that their demands are satisfied, but also happy operators because we don't waste their resources. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you for your attention. Um, all the code, uh, the machine learning models, the data are all open source here on the link or here with the QR code. And that's it. Thanks.